Hi. Did you know that one of the coping mechanisms that most African farms have towards the increased demand in livestock products is by increasing the number of animals in their households? Yes. So they think that the more animals you have, the more milk or meat you're going to produce in your farm. But then, what does that mean for our environment? My name is Phyllis Nungo, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Pretoria, and I'm here to talk to you about a partial life cycle assessment uh, of smallholder small livestock systems in Western Kenya. Our study will help to identify factors that contribute to too much emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, emitted in our systems, and this information will help in facilitating higher resource use efficiency that will result to better livelihoods and lower climate impacts of our systems. I am a product of livestock earnings. My parents' uh, main occupation is farming, and part of what they do is keeping livestock. While I was growing up, livestock was the main source of income. So my parents would sell animals or even sell the milk to the milk factory and would get a better credit uh, capacity through sales of milk and eventually would get school fees for us, for myself and my siblings. That is how much livestock are important. I can attest to that. So livestock are very important in so many households in Africa. They help in improving the nutritional status of most uh, farmers and also the growth, economic, social and economic growth of these households. But most of these animals are characterized by low productivity. Why? Because they are of poor feeding, which can be because of poor uh, feed quality or even lack of feeds, uh, availability of feeds throughout the year. There has also been the, uh, another challenge on poor animal husbandry practices, which has been mainly because of either lack of knowledge or lack of capital investment to improve on that as well. Livestock have been an, a, attributed to emissions production. 18% um, of the emissions from the agricultural sector comes from um, livestock. Therefore, that globally is a significant amount of emissions, but those from African region are mostly reported using default emission factors that have been provided by Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change because of lack of data from our systems. Now, those default emission factors carry high uncertainties and at some times, they may under or overestimate the emissions that are currently being produced. So a number of researchers have conducted research to try and improve the estimates of the emissions from the livestock sector uh, by producing tier two emission factors for many uh, for enteric methane. And what they have found was different places produce different emission factors. In Kenya, for example, there have been three studies that have been conducted, but all the three came out with different emission factors. So what we thought we learned was that even if we have more accurate emission estimates for, uh, that are tier two, they still do not explain, or they cannot tell us where that difference in emissions is coming from. So we thought about um, uh, finding out or determining and showing what could be the cause of the differences in emissions between these regions. One of the emissions that can be used is emission intensities. Emission intensities, which is derived from calculating all the emissions and they being associated to a certain livestock product, is, has been shown to demonstrate uh, and better inform on the resource use efficiencies in different farms and also sustainability of our system. How is it measured? So emissions intensities 
are measured by using a life cycle assessment method, which has the unique way to quantify all the greenhouse gas emissions uh, throughout the life cycle of that product. And these emissions are referenced towards what we call a found fractional unit, which is the quantity of a value associated with the purpose of that system. The aim of our study, therefore, was to develop a baseline information on the emissions intensities of smallholder livestock systems in Western Kenya. So we had three questions in our minds. Does emissions intensity vary between smallholder farms in a similar locality? What is the carbon hotspot of smallholder livestock systems? And last but not least, what are the drivers? of emissions intensities in smallholder livestock systems. Once a month, we conducted a study in three different sites in Western Kenya, Nyando, Nandi, and Bomet, all in close proximity to each other. We sampled 313 small holding farms, all located in different agroecological zones, and had a total hard size of more than 3,000 cattle of varied age groups. The type of data we collected was animal production data, feed basket data, all measured on a seasonal basis in order to capture the seasonal effects. We, also, uh, uh, we were also able to capture the movement of animals in and out of the farm so that we can see the difference in the hard numbers across the year. Why? Because of the sales or the purchases of the animals, like we said earlier, of farmers tending to buy in more animals so that they can be able to cater for the increased demand of livestock products. So in our life cycle assessment uh, study, we adopted the cradle to farm gate system boundary, where we accounted for all the calculated emissions from all the activities that are inside the farm and associated them to the farm outputs, which in this case are milk and meat but they were both reported by crude protein, which is a common measure for both. Animals uh, in this are kept under grazing systems, so most of the better part of the day, they are under pasture. Then they, um, in the evening when they are brought back, they come back close to home and they are put in an enclosure. So when they are on pasture, some of the manure is deposited there. The remaining part of the manure is deposited in an enclosure where then during cleaning, which is done periodically, is piled and applied to different feed crops. Feed baskets for these animals have different feed stuffs in there. We say pasture is uh, main, com uh, they are under grazing, so pasture forms the highest percentage of the feed basket. And the remaining are just supplementation are only available when the season is there, especially for like for example maize crops. The maize uh, the crop residues are available during the harvesting of that crop. Then the emissions from um, these sources were calculated, like for example, the emissions from entire fermentation were calculated using metabolizable energy requirement approach. For manure management, we used um, the IPCC guidelines and the local emission factors derived by local conditions, that is manure from pasture, on enclosure, and also on pile. Then emissions from uh, farm inputs were also included there. And the emission intensity was then calculated as the total emissions from all these uh, emission sources divided by the total output, which is milk and meat. So what did we find? To answer our question of whether the ant farms vary between season, between each other, yes, they do vary. We see that there is a substantial variation of farms emissions intensities where we are having some farms having lower emissions intensities than others. For example, we had Nandi having higher proportion of farms with high emissions intensities and this was because of the differences in the farm outputs, where uh, farms with higher crude protein output had lower emissions, while those of higher, uh, lower crude protein had higher emission intensities. 
Also, because of the nature of our data, we reported our emissions intensities by median, where we saw that Nyando had the highest proportion, with almost twice the emissions intensities as thought, those of Nandi and Bomet. Looking at the carbon hotspot of our smallholder systems, we see that enteric fermentation drove emissions on all farms in all regions, um, followed by the manure emissions. Uh, but in this case, manure emissions were not as much as what is commonly um, reported. And this was because we used emission factors from local conditions. Also, our systems are of low input and therefore there were very small emissions coming from agrochemicals and fertilizers. Now, looking at the, uh, the graph here, we see that milk contributed the highest proportion of the total output, uh, while meat contributes uh, 20 to 25% of the total crude protein. Um, when we look at some of the drivers that uh, the drivers of emissions intensities in smallholder farms, we see that having more animals should not be the most efficient. So for those farmers that are uh, coping by increasing the number of animals to increase productivity, um, that will, is not really the most efficient uh, way. What we learned was the most efficient uh, way and drives the emissions efficiency was having high per cow milk yield, high sales of animals for meat, and also having a high proportion of productive animals, especially females in the herd. All those farms that exhibited these characteristics showed emissions intensities that were close to those that are in Western systems. And therefore, if we pursue these forecast management objectives, we have the potential to move our systems towards uh, reducing emissions intensities as well as reducing, reducing potential uh, uh, total greenhouse gas emissions from our systems. So what do we learn from this? This work has shown that there still are highly emission efficient farms, even at low inputs. And note this, even at low inputs. But there's still some uh, presence of farms with very high and very poor efficiencies. Therefore, we need to pro improve the productivity on per animal basis and structure the herds to make them more productive and especially females who would increase the milk output. So this is the first, LCA is the first of its kind. And this accounts for direct emissions from smallholder systems and uses primary data to provide a benchmark for further LCAs. So we need to focus on improving and increasing the on-farm output while constraining further increase in enteric methane emissions. Like for example, farmers, uh, introducing more animals to increase productivity. And if we do this, we'll be moving towards a more efficient frontier enterprises. And this will therefore move our smallholder farms towards a low carbon future, increase household income, and have a food secure world. I'm grateful to my sponsors and my partners. And I will leave you with this that I have personally seen that a happy cow always lives. A happy farm. Thank you.